Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Weekly Conversations Podcast and in today's episode I'll be discussing the entire Blake Lively controversy that has been happening throughout the entirety of social media, everywhere of the internet, wherever you look, go and be, you will hear about someone discussing Blake Lively and her entire career reputation, everything going down the toilet. That being said, I'd like to get straight into it. Blake Lively stars in the film Ends With Us, which is based on a novel created by Colleen Hoover, who gained popularity on TikTok. Colleen Hoover specifically chose Blake for the role because she admired her talent, which is bullshit. Absolute bullshit. Why would you pick her? I have no idea. However, despite the film's success, Blake Lively's reputation has come under scrutiny due to the way of the film was marketed. And as we all know how the marketing that this woman and her group of people decided to really tackle such an important film dedicated to domestic violence, sexual abuse, sexual assault, those types of stuff. The promotion was done in such a comedic and like funny way where they were making it seem as if it was a romantic comedy. It was supposed to be hilarious, funny, energetic, very uplifting. When in real life, when individuals that went to go and watch this film, thinking from what they've seen from the promotional advertising that they've witnessed throughout the entirety of the internet was supposed to be something nice, funny, and like heartwarming. Was something about domestic violence, sexual assault, sexual abuse. Nothing that was meaningful of any sort. Because remember, the end, it ends with us, is a book primarily based about those specific contents, wordings, and general perspective because that's the author's envisionment when writing this book this is what the author wanted to discuss and talk about and really paint a specific clean picture about such an important and very you know life-changing situation for any man or woman that goes through such a thing and the appalling if not callousness of such an individual and the group of people that really rallied behind her, followed her every move, listened to what she had to say, and did exactly what they were told, is a disgrace, it's a shame, and it is reckless, naive, horrible behavior. And whatever she's getting now, at this very minute, and furthermore from today, she perfectly and well randomly deserves what she is getting. The amount of stuff that people were able to dig from her past and what she's been doing now is disgusting, humiliating, and if not, furthermore from embarrassing. And to continue further, when Justin missed cast activities, interviews, and movie premiere photos, it sparked speculations and social media buzz. Uh, intensely, he declined to partake due to the health issues and family com- um, family commitments. My reading is so bad, but to go further into this very detail, this was something that was very interesting to me when hearing about this and my proposition of an opinion is that Blake Lively and her group of individuals or her posse to say in quotes were the reason why this man who was the actor in this film was the producer of this film was the director of this film wanted absolutely if not nothing about this film and I tell you this because the way that they made this film 
And the way that they ended this film with the marketing and everything, he wanted nothing to do with it. Because especially when it came to the marketing, it was Blake Lively that ruined literally every corner, inch and detail for this film. She did everything horribly to make this film relatable. Not essentially in that way, but you know it is in that way. And in the marketing department, she absolutely threw everything in the bin. And I do not blame this man for not wanting to participate or go through anything with this woman and her group of people that were trying to so much market this thing, but they ruined it. Although he later attended press events, he kept his distance from the cast and crew, which was very rightfully so done correctly. He deserved nothing to be surrounded by those men and women. He deserved nothing to be associated or connected or even to be around those people. And I credit him, salute him, and respect his decisions when going at this at a face value and a forward-looking perspective. He did the right stuff. He thought of the right stuff, did the right stuff, made the right decisions, and I can credit that man with 100% credit where credit is due. Good for him good for his decision making and I'm glad he was involved in nothing but in the later stages where it was getting close to the film premiere or in the film premiere he was getting himself into the carpet doing uh, interviews with reporters journalists and interviewers and he did the right thing for waiting at the closest possible time not the furthest possible time from the moment itself also he uh Abandoned, he uh, well, not abandoned. I can't even read. He embraces from interviews, groups. Uh, he removes himself. I'll do that again. He remove him, removes himself from interviews, group photos, and a lack of social media support for influencers. And the premiere only fueled more rumors. And this being like he's a, he abandoned himself from all of those stuff is the best thing he could have done because as mentioned, Blake Lively and her partner and her people ruined it and this does come as a cost for that man and him not being there was the best decision he ever made until as mentioned later on. Furthermore, Justin's probability uh, portrayal, sorry, of a villain in the film has led to his separation from the uh, what ensemble and discussion that has divided fans. People are saying him not being him in a way. I can't even speak. Him taking the portrayal of a villain in a film wasn't such a good idea. So they were like, mm. Others were like, you know, he did a good job. He did the best he could. Whatever he was able to do was something else. But remember, as we get further on, we will learn that the situation just got worse for this man and the public's divide towards this individual will make more sense. Even more, some uh, appreciate the move for adding depth to the story, while others are puzzled by the inconsistent promotion of the film. And here's the backstory. Justin, at the days before and on the day of the premiere, had said that him being the villain in this film was very hard and very challenging for him. In moments for this film, it made him want to step back a bit, let the females do the job. Blake Lively, who was at the time the co-director of this film, 
took some positions and kept going while Justin stepped back, went to his trailer, refreshed his mind, cleared what was going on because he's playing a man who's making a woman go through domestic violence and it is hard for him. It's not easy. It's not like something any of us could do anytime today or tomorrow. He had to physically and mentally prepare himself for such a hard role that he wasn't comfortable with, but he took up the challenge. And credit for him for at least doing something outside of his comfort zone, but yet at the same time, for him it came at a cost and a price at the outcomes of what he had to go through. Critics have noted that marketing, particularly around Justin's role and the film's message on domestic abuse has been unclear because something I am telling you happened behind the scenes that made Blake the fuck lively. Go fuck him, screw him, nothing with him. And they just tried to paint him as horrible guy, not good guy, very not nice person. He is bad guy. That's what they were trying to do to this very poor, innocent, naive man. They went, he's bad, he's horrible, he's not good, F him. Cunts is what I tell you to that woman and anyone that was participating in this marketing, advertising, and promotion for this very, very um, heavily, uh, this heavily challenged subject, if not topic. This mainly is a very serious issue that they were trying to do, and. The marketing just ruined it. They did all the wrong things and they just went with her direction, someone else's direction. Like they just made it as a bad of a job as they could have and good for them for fucking it up because in the end, that film never got any good reviews from people on TikTok or people on YouTube or people on social media, even on the internet. This woman, really ruined the fuck out of a film that probably would have been good to watch. We would have enjoyed the content of what was happening. We would have been like, even though it was like a very horrible thing that was happening to people, at least we would have been, you know, enjoyed this film, been like, it's, it was a good film. It tackled all the right stuff and made all the good, uh, all the bad stuff, but they did it in a very good way to portray it in this film, they did all the good stuff that was meant to be happening from the book into real life. It's her fault for ruining this film. And I'm telling you now, if they ever had an opportunity to remake this film, I'm telling you from scratch, open book, clean page, bring back the director, producer, and the actor of this film, Justin. Let him and new and a new group of individuals recreate this film as it should have been from the very, very beginning. And if Blake Lively wanted to be involved, at least she could have been a producer of this film or maybe like a co-director with the man, but had nothing to do with the fronts or ruined it. Maybe if she was even behind the scenes, she could have probably ruined it for the talented men and women that would have tackled this role of being man who would have been involved in doing domestic violence and domestic abuse and the woman receiving those types of stuff. But yet, whatever way we can point the perspective of the situation, it probably would have ended how it ended now. It would have probably ended probably a lot more worse than it is now. But then, then further going on, the fact that only Justin addressed the movie's content to uh, gender-based violence has further raised questions about the overall strategy because he was coming in at an honest straightforward way while everyone else was playing it as if it was like nothing bad nothing horrible nothing weird i think they were just trying to paint the picture of this film not being so serious and nothing about what was being discussed in this film was actually serious and it was just in their heads a joke a funny laugh something that they were thinking ah 
it's fine, it's okay, it's nothing bad, it's not horrible. Disgusting, horrible, visual people. Whoever made those people in the marketing department and in the acting department, idiots, twats, and morons is what I call you. Fuck you. Then, to go further, Blake Lively faces criticism for potentially tra uh, trivializing the serious theme of domestic abuse in her film, especially as someone see as some as some see her promoting her hair care brand in connection with the movie. Oh my God, this. Th what is it like? Almost 40 year old bitch took this opportunity to stand in front of interviewers, journalists, people, and being like, her literally saying, guys, go out, buy my hair products, get my skin routine, do all that shit, fuck the film, fuck this shit, forget domestic violence, forget domestic abuse, forget all those important stuff. My hair care product and my beauty stuff are more important than what actually happens in actual real life. She is so out of life's reality that she just went, buy my shirt, get the shirt, do all that stuff. She lost the plot, absolutely. And to further go on, in contrast, Ryan, Ryan Reynolds is praised for his humble approach, focusing on the up, uploading his uh, colleagues and respecting the film's message because he knows what this film's message is about. He knows everything to do with this film. It might as well, he would might as well have just been the director. Or he should, like, I know he produced, uh, he's part of the being a producer, but it might as well have just been him sticking to production and, uh, you know, making the shots at least and communicating and having uh, back and forth with the director, uh, Justin, then his wife literally putting her foot down, being like, fuck you, fuck this. This is how the film's gonna go. Son of a bitch. Then, the difference in the promotional strategies has led to co cooperations, uh, comparison, sorry, with Ryan Reynolds being viewed as more sincere and respectful while Lively's approach has sparked controversy over the film's marketing because that man knows the film's context. He knows what to do and what to say for this film to really be in touch and in line with the people. While this woman completely blindsided, remembers nothing, goes, I don't know, you know, if someone tries to approach me, I discuss this with me, like, what do you want me to do? Give them uh, my house address to share it with them. Do you want me to start going and hanging with them, discussing this with them? Like, the woman is so out of reality, out of touch. She does not even know probably what her name is anymore. I'm glad that she's getting the nail in the coffin that she deserved probably like 10 years ago or something. The reaction to Blake Lively's apparent focus on self-promotion rather than addressing the serious issues of domestic abuse in her own film has been intense. Some reviewers feel that she is overshadowing the film's uh, important domestic violence theme by pretorizing uh, prioritizing her own publicity, which is true. She cares about nothing, absolutely nothing but herself. Her reality from being in touch is out, 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 out. She knows nothing, completely out of touch. And I'm glad she's finally getting critics telling her, that she is being tone deaf and not fully grasping the gravity of the subject matter in what is happening 
in this film. Like, this woman's cancellation is probably a gift from God wrapped around in a bow, a nice fancy looking beautiful box, just being unwrapped and opened and boom. The woman's entire career flashed before our eyes. We've witnessed the full decline and depth of Blake Lively. Thank fuck is what I say. Her dismissive responses to questions about the film's themes have disappointed many. As a result, both Lively and her husband, Ryan Reynolds, are now facing negative uh, perceptions in the entertainment industry because they've seen what's been going on. The man was just trying to participate and help his wife, you know, being a good helping sport. The woman should have never, ever got him involved in the interviews in the many more problems we'll see later on because what she did pretty much was put her husband's career out you know, thin, fragile ice. Well, she literally just sunk like the Titanic in the furthest matter of seconds of her words, choices, and the way she approached stuff. Really, she's the genius of what a killing a career in the matter of one film really does to a person. She's just a genius because the reaction to Blake Lively's action during the movie's press tour is intensifying this really shone a light of how she acts, what she does, and when doing something. How out of touch this woman is to reality. She forgot everything, literally everything. She went and thought about her, her uh, hair care product. She just thought about herself. And the producer, Justin, she just went, nope. Because as we see, producer Justin and actress Blake Lively had disagreements over the film's Marketing strategy, Blake Lively brought in new direct, a new editor without Justin's approval, escalating the conflict. This is true. This woman, one, had wanted to make this film more like this is what they should wear, this is what they should be looking like, this is what they should be doing, while Justin wanted to make it more about what is being mentioned in the book. That man wanted to, to probably make 99% of that film accurate to the book, exactly what was happening within the book. He wanted to make it like, if you read the book, at least it would make 99% or 90% accuracy from within the book in the real life world. At least people have been like, you know, the book was so good, the movie adaptation of it was even better than reading the book because the way it really paints a picture of your head from what you read in the story to what it came out to be in real life. Like, for fuck's sake, Justin should have just, should have just been the main man when doing production, acting, and producing in this show. If Ryan Reynolds wants to get involved by himself, he should have. I'm assuming his wife had some sort of words and saying and actions for him to being like, you know what, you know, you're coming with me, you're doing this with me. I think she manipulated him in such a very specific manner and distinctive way that he was just going, oh shit, you know, the missus said something, now I have to do it. And then comes the tense further incre uh, in increased... Uh, attention further increased when Lively's husband, Ryan Reynolds, made substantial changes to several sequences without informing the writers. Because what was said was, the woman wanted her husband to make it more, you know, funnier or make it a specific type of way. And this is what made it even more worse than it should have been. Because the writers had no idea. The writers found out on the day of the premiere. Imagine them. They had no clue. The One of the female writers had said the writing that she had seen being played out in the film made her wonder, were these actors really going and making improvisations to what was being written where they trying to do their own thing. But no, they, she found out that the man, Ryan Reynolds, walked into the writing section without anyone's knowledge, changed half, maybe, you know, a good, maybe five, ten percent of the script, and just tried to make it to his wife's pleasing. I swear, this woman's 
a very manipulative wife. If this man doesn't get a divorce, I don't know what will. Online users have criticized Blake Lively for out or orchestrating a scene in which Justin Balandi, sorry for the name pronunciation, gives her an extremely long kiss. Many have labeled the scenario as ridiculous and overly sensitive as Lively detected uh, directed, produced, and stud in the sequence, some believe she could have easily edited out the prolonged kiss. All, all, all observers have described the extended kissing as unnecessary and unrealistic because one lively tried to make Justin look bad and tried to make him as a horrible individual when in real life he isn't. Then, the overly sensitive scenes and stuff where she could have added them out did the editing out she didn't she just left them in because this woman just wanted to make the man look bad or try to make people do their own choices and distinctive manners of what it should have been and then observers telling you that it was the kiss was unnecessary and unrealistic because it probably wasn't the man was uncomfortable justin and then the woman was trying to force him into it because trying trying it, making it more realistic when probably there wasn't much of a spark even if they had both really caught onto it. I'm telling you, they should have gotten two different people, two different people to do this. Main, the main two character roles. For fuck's sake, I swear other than this, thank you all very so much for listening to the podcast, watching it on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe and like if you're on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe if you are on Apple Podcast. And make sure to follow and like my podcast on Spotify. Make sure to leave me a comment down below. Tell me what you think of this episode and I will catch all of you in the next one. Goodbye.